Good morning, I'm here in Luang Prabang. It is 6 a.m. and we are here witnessing the almsgiving. What used to be a very special, intimate affair is now just a massive tourist activity. There are tourists putting their like phones and cameras up in monks' faces and like novices, young children. It just doesn't hold the same charm. I think it probably used to. And it's quite unfortunate. And you'll see like kids and the monks have too much food that they don't know what to do with it all. So like they don't need it all. So they're just like dumping it in bins, which I have read that go towards other people. It's kind of disheartening to see this. So if you do come and you do participate in almsgiving, please be on the opposite side of the road. Give them space. Do not be putting your phones or cameras like up in anyone's faces. And if you do decide as a tourist to participate and give food, make sure that you're not doing it just as like checking it off your bucket list. But make sure that it actually means something to you and you understand the concept behind it. Getting in a truck tuk tuk and we are heading up to the waterfalls now. Miraculously, I found three other strangers to share it with me. So the price becomes a lot cheaper. All right, we made it to the waterfalls. It's about 7.50, they open at eight. We're gonna go grab some tickets now. Someone had told me that you could drive a motorbike here, which you can. So if you are confident driving a motorbike, go for it. I can drive a motorbike, but that road has a lot of potholes, a lot of twists and turns, a lot of random animals running out on the road. I just wouldn't recommend it. I recommend going with a group. Different hostels can set up trips for you to come, or there's a ton of the like truck tuk-tuks all along the roads that can bring you here. And it costs 500,000 to come up here, which is like 25 USD. So in the grand scheme of things, very cheap. First look at the water. Oh, oh my gosh, this color is stunning. Look at this. The color of the water here is so stunning. And it gets its color because the water runs over limestone rocks and it picks up calcium bicarbonate. When you first arrive, there are a bunch of shop vendors selling food, clothing, anything you can think of. And then right before the big main waterfall, there is a restaurant here. So yeah, time to go jump in. It is 9.30 and it is now so many people are here i would say a bunch of the crowds definitely kind of started arriving around 9 maybe 9 15 ish so if you want to get here and have the place yourself be here before eight o'clock the very first pool that you come across is going to be the bluest one it is so stunning and then as you go up and up there's some more waterfalls there's different uh swimming areas and then you also have some parts where you cannot swim, but there are plenty of signs letting you know whether you can swim there or not. There's also though the bear exhibit. So I guess there's some bears here um, and they're trying to preserve them. You do walk past the bear exhibit, but I first wanted to get to the falls. So now on my way back, we're gonna go check out the bears. So Laos has two bear species, the moon and sun bears. Here they've got moon bears that were rescued from like illegal wildlife trading. Um, and so when you are here, if you would like, they would greatly appreciate if you bought a t-shirt or gave a donation because none of the ticket prices for the waterfalls goes to the bear exhibit. Got one minute to make it back to my tuk-tuk. <laughs> We are moving. We just got back from the waterfall. It was about a 40 minute bumpy, bumpy ride. So I immediately needed some coffee. Little stand on the side of the road called 25 Caffeine. So delicious. It's a coconut latte. My problem with iced coffees though is I drink them way too fast. If you're like me, make sure you subscribe so you can see next week's video and see if I drink my iced coffee too fast. That was a lame way to ask you to subscribe, but if you do want to see more parts of this beautiful world, if you do want to see some more helpful travel guides, make sure you subscribe. Okay, so I just tried getting into the National Museum back here behind me. You have to buy tickets, and I think you have to buy tickets in advance somewhere. I'm not really sure, but she just kind of kicked me out. I was like, you have to leave. And then she also told me I could not bring back, back her camera in. Um, and I said, where do I put them? And she said, the locker room. And then she pointed to another building. I have no idea what this is about. I think I'm probably going to end up skipping it then. I just wandered upon it. What is normally a quiet, peaceful UNESCO World Heritage Site of Luang Prabang has been the craziest, busiest, 
most hectic five days ever. Um, we did just have the Chinese New Year. Supposedly there's a Vietnamese holiday going on right now too. And China and Laos just opened up their borders to each other. So Chinese citizens can now enter Laos for the first time in a while. All this information was told to me by my tour guide from the slow boat. Um, so if you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you go watch it. But wow, wow, wow. It has been so busy here. And like everyone talks about how like cute and quiet this town is and like how much charm it has. And I just have not experienced that at all in the slightest bit. So hopefully when you come here, you've got better luck than I do. Okay, I just stumbled into like a little art exhibit. It's just photographs of Loatians. I think that I'm pronouncing that right. Loatians, I believe. But wow, this photographer's work is incredible. I really enjoy portrait photos. Bunch of really cute like cafes and restaurants and like other little like um, boutique clothing stores that I think if this town wasn't super busy right now, it would be like the really cute quaint town. But that's okay, because that's just life. But this town is definitely not lacking in temples. There are a bunch here. Um, right now I'm at one of the most popular ones, Watson Tsukuro. Some of the back streets and some of the little back alleyways look really cool and really unique back in here. Then you can just kind of get lost wandering through. And this little alleyway is leading me straight out onto the Mekong Delta. All along the Mekong, you're gonna find a bunch of different restaurants. Um, the food is good, but the prices are definitely gonna be a lot more expensive. When you come to Luang Prabang, I definitely recommend you come to the blood donation center and come and donate blood. They definitely need extra blood. They only get to receive about like half of what they actually need each year. Um, it's very safe, everything looks clean and good here. Um, and yeah, the kids need it, the people of Laos need it. Come donate blood when you're here. The donation center is by the main hospital. It's just like a 10 minute to foot ride um, out of like the main old town, downtown area. When you're done, you get water, juice, and some snacks. Now that we are all donating blood, we are at the UXO Lao Visitor Center. And this is where we're gonna learn all about the different bombings that the US did during the Vietnam War in Laos. I think you're gonna be quite surprised by this information. If you haven't yet, I definitely recommend you watch the documentary, This Little Land of Mines. Extremely educational. Let's go check this out. UXO Lao is an organization here in Laos that they remove all of the unexploded bombs that were left behind here in Laos. Um, in a nine year period, nine or 10 year period, over 270 million bombs were dropped in Laos. Laos is the most heavily bombed country in the entire world. And that's including World War II. This small country has littered with bombs and there are about 80 million of them that have still not exploded and they look like little balls and so kids will go and pick them up and play with them and then they go off. It truly is like a really horrific horrendous thing and so UXO Lao goes out and they try to remove it and they try to help but there are so many of them that it's really difficult. Um, they just don't have the funding and the US government just has not given enough funding to them and so while UXO Lao does still go out and educate the children and tell people like you know be careful you can't really go off trails you know etc part of the problem too is that it's farmland people need to farm so many people have been out of work then because they can't go out and be in the land okay enough of that because it makes me really upset and it's really depressing but I'm starting to feel woozy after donating blood because I haven't ate anything today and I haven't drank enough water. I know that's really bad of me. When I filled out the form, I said that I did eat, I said that I was drinking water and I just haven't. So we're gonna go somewhere and find some food. All right, so we found a very local place called Pat Salin. Prices are really cheap. Their menu is huge. And since I've been here, it's been nonstop busy. Like people just constantly come to the restaurant, a lot of locals and then also some tourists too. Let's dig in.
Lunch was amazing. I definitely recommend it there, but I am heading back to my hostel. I'm staying at Funny Riverside Backpackers Hostel. I think they're great. Not a super party hostel, but it's nice, laid back, um, good bedrooms, good showers, gorgeous views. But I'm gonna head back there because it's hot. I need to shower. I've been out since 5.30 a.m. So yeah, and then we've got more things going on later today. So time to go relax. I believe there's about 300 steps to get up to the top here and it wasn't too bad. It does cost 20 kip to enter in here. Along the walk you are going to see some other Buddha statues, things to look at, nice words like on signs against the trees. I do recommend though getting here early. The stairs are pretty narrow so sometimes the lines can get pretty long. I am here 50 minutes before sunset and it is already this busy. Maybe it's just because it is so busy here right now at this moment but I can't really think of a worse way to watch a sunset. Everyone's just got their phones and cameras out. I'm obviously guilty of it too, but nothing peaceful, nothing quiet about it. Can't really see much of the sunset. So unless you get here like two hours early, I would say you could skip it or like it doesn't really matter what time you get here. It's just gonna be really busy. So just be prepared. So I had read that you need to have your shoulders and knees covered if you're a female going up here because it is a temple. But there was a bunch of people that had their shoulders and knees showing. So I'm not really sure. But I would say it's always better to err on the side of caution. Hi. Oh my goodness, it's so... Okay, that was the absolute best. Sun Thon just came up, saw me, grabbed me and hugged me at first. You can see I was like, what is happening? Um, but he was our guide on the slow boat. He is the absolute, he's just a gem. If you haven't seen the slow boat video yet, make sure you go watch it right here. So right at the base of the stairs, when you get down with the Fusi Hill is going to be the night market. This happens every single night. You can buy different like handmade textiles, blankets, and then there's a bunch of food as well. So the market opens up every single day at five o'clock, but it's about six o'clock and they're still like just kind of getting things set up. So I would definitely say you probably don't get here before six o'clock. Also, you can't always haggle prices. Some are set prices though, and just always make sure that you're being respectful and don't be rude with the price that you're gonna give them. So the street is all going to be souvenir vendors, clothing vendors, bags, artwork. And then at the very end of the street, there's gonna be that kind of like little park area. And that is gonna be all of the food vendors. And I'm starving, so let's go eat. There are so many options here. Last time I was here, I went with some bao buns and some dumplings. And this time, though, I got some like fried spring rolls and then also the barbecue pork with rice. It is both it's so delicious. Highly recommend that. The night market is delicious and has so much food to choose from. I stopped at a little convenience store, got myself some dessert. And I'm calling it a night because tomorrow we are leaving and heading to Nongkiao.